the Pompidou, it was actually called the Beaubourg when we did the competition and Pompidou, when, uh, Pompidou died uh, a year before completion, was a competition for a museum, a library, a music center, a design center. I'm going to say in the center of Paris, but in a very run-down area. Uh, when we did our first studies, it showed that there was no public space nearby. So we created this big piazza, there were, I think, 681 entries. Interesting enough, there were no, no other one with a big piazza. The piazza is really critical to the workings of the Pompidou. And in a sense, it was a, a fun palace, using a, a very well-known phrase by Joan Littlewood and Cedric Price of the post-war era, shall we say. It wasn't just a building. So the idea was you had a public space, horizontal, and you'd go up the facade of the building in streets in the air, escalators floating across it. So the whole thing became very much dynamic. People come to see people as well as see art and people come to meet people. So we wanted to make that as packed as a theatre. And on the facade in those days was an electronic screen that could connect up with any other museum or cultural centre. We had it all going very well until Pompidou died and Giscard came along and he said those terrible words that sunk it with no hands. Uh, uh, he said, but what side, the left or the right, we can't control it. And I said, oh, it's not political. He said, come on, pull my, <laughs> pull my leg. It's, it's a political weapon. I don't want it. So that died. Having said that, what Renzo and I hadn't worked out uh, was, of course, the French are fantastic at promenading. So they promenade over the facade. They promenade through the piazza. And then all these other people came. It was attacked, vilified. Uh, well, so we were designed from the first day onwards. It was nobody said one kind word until it opened. And when people started to queue up, then it became uh, open. I mean, I remember once uh, standing outside on a rainy day and there's this small woman with an umbrella and she said, do you want to have shelter? I said, yes, thank you. And we started talking as one does in the rain. And she said, what do you think of this building? Well, the Pompidou. And stupidly, which I would never normally do, I said, I designed it. And she hit me on the head with an umbrella. It was just, you know, that was sort of typical of the general reaction of the people especially during the design and construction stage, destroying their beautiful Paris. And of course, you know, it is, does not fit in within the sense of what w was Paris. On the other hand, all good architecture is modern in its time. There's always, you know, Gothic was a fantastic shock. The Renaissance was a another shock to all, in, all the little medieval buildings. I come from Florence and I'm the Strozzi Palace, which is one of the largest palaces in, in, in Florence, which is, I suppose, four stories going eight stories. And there's a famous document of one of the neighbors saying, you know, you're building a building completely out of scale uh, with ours, a tower you know, uh, next to us. Of course, you know, from one to eight is a big difference. So changes, so the shock of the new uh, is always rather difficult to get over, though it's much better, it's got better, partly because I'm older and people look at the buildings, my, uh, mine and Renzo's, but they either love them or, or hate them, so they're more used to it. But boy, was that out. So then we said, okay, we'll have fantastic flexibility. The one thing we know about this age is that it's all about change. If there's one constant, it's change. So we said we will make massive floors, which weigh, in fact, two, the size of two football pitches, with no vertical interruptions. Structure on the outside, mechanical service on the outside, people movement on the outside, and theoretically you can do anything you want on those floors. And we didn't say where the museum should go, where the library should go. And of course, the library changed radically because when we started, we were, there were books. And that was a, by the time we finished it, books were always finished because it was IT. Um, so again, that's about change, about how you because you need a different type of light, different, different type of spaces, all those racks of books, you know, more or less go and so on, which is typical of an evolving, lively institution, whether it's an office building or even a house, it has to respond. And today's buildings, unlike, shall we say, the buildings of the past when we used to say. Uh, uh, architecture is like frozen music. Actually, I would suggest today, architecture is my, more like jazz, dynamic jazz, jazz that you can interpret in different ways within a beat and a framework. So we were looking also at that as the whole of as, as the modern art and modern thinking was going. Now, Renzo and I, well, we've been very close friends. We met about two years before we did Pompidou, and now we speak at least once a week and we go sailing together. So we're very, very close. To, it's quite difficult to divide us. Um, if you look at our earlier work, we did the house in Wimbledon uh, for my parents, which is a single story house and it's steel and it's got highly insulated, it's transparent, the bathroom is in a very compact way, everything can move, all the pottery can move. You can see a link from that to the Pompidou. The difference of about a thousand times the scale. 
If you look at Renzo's work, beautifully structured work. I mean, he had done some wonderful laboratories, tremendous engineering, construction, process of building. His father was a contractor, a major contractor. If you put those together, you could argue that it sort of goes in that, uh, in that direction. Of course, it's not true, because it probably could have gone in another direction. But, um, and we wanted to make a building which clearly was of our period, you know, caught the zittergeist of, of the now. The big thing in those days, six was the student movement, and in France, it is said that Pompidou had a plane rowing up because he thought he'd lost the war against the students, the intellectuals, and the workers. Literally, with that cutting, that moment nearly changed the history, certainly for Europe. Um, and it looked as though there'd be a revolution. In fact, it didn't happen. Um, but of course, we captured some of it in the building. The facade on the building, if you look more carefully, which I talked about the screen, was very much about the riots. Um, it was very much about Vietnam. I met my wife with other friends who were escaping the draft, not she was, but her friends were. Uh, it was a highly active per period of politics, and you could argue that was a, also part of the concept, um, that this is a dynamic period, a, a period which we know will change, but we want to catch what's going on at the moment. Now, having said that, we rationalized it like hell. I mean, the, if you look at the, the written documents, there are very much um, documents which tell you about the building. Now, some are post-rationalization, some are rationalization, shall we say. Um, but overall, yes, we, you know, we said we will put the building, not as Yuan did in those days in the middle of the piazza, but actually on one side. That will give the people a place to, to, to meet. We'll put it on the street because we'll keep the, the nature of the long street. We need a movement system which is dynamic. I hate going up in sort of internal lifts uh, with people's uh, heads in my stomach or vice versa. I mean, why not give them the view? Movement is, should be celebrated. Now, is movement celebrated? At how much is that uh, something which is intellectual? How much is it something which you feel? I don't, you can't divide those, those things. So we had those concepts. Um, there were the metabolists in, to in Japan who were working. There was Archigram in England. I went to school with Peter Cook in the Archigram movement. Uh, for instance, all those were differently influenced. There's the Piazza in Siena. Um, I don't think we go in to look at the Piazza in Siena. I think I, we didn't even realize we'd done a Piazza which was sloping a bit like that until we did it. But of course, in our minds, Siena must have been there as many other wonderful Italian piazzas. So the whole idea of Pompidou was it's a place for the meeting of all people. And the success of it, it was that the French took it over and was the most visited building, certainly in Europe.